Since the dawn of human reason, we have striven continually to raise our standard of living, to improve for our benefit this world in which we live. Everywhere is evidence of how our science helps us to develop machines to build and maintain our arteries of commerce, machines to carry us and our goods everywhere, machines to till our soil and do countless other jobs. But not quite so evident nor well known are the great developments in horticulture and agriculture which are constantly increasing the satisfaction of our basic need, which aid us every day in the field fundamental to all of us, the production of our food. The plant breeders, whom a noted author aptly calls the hunger fighters, are modern miracle makers. Their patient, painstaking work to develop new plant varieties and improve old ones is a prime factor in the increased productivity of our farmlands. New and more productive varieties of grains, vegetables, and other crops to feed our world. New types of grasses and legumes to save and improve our precious topsoil. All these have stemmed from their efforts. An outstanding example of the plant breeder's magic has been the commercial development of hybrid seed corn. Within the past 25 years, Corn production has been improved until yesterday's record yields are the average of today. As a result of this development, last year's crop was upped some 700 million bushels and our corn belt has been widened until it extends from Canada to the Gulf Coast. Today, in many of the corn belt states, almost all of the corn crop is grown from hybrid seed. Production of the seed is a thriving industry made up of many growers. A visit to any one of their farms will provide the story of how good hybrid seed corn is developed and produced. The science of animal husbandry has developed superior stocks of beef and dairy cattle by selective breeding. The plant breeders have applied the same principle of controlled breeding, selection and crossing, to the development of better seed corn. The corn plant has the rare ability to take part in the reproductive process, either as a male or female or both. The tassel is the male element. It provides the pollen. The ear is the female element. It furnishes the seed when fertilized by pollen falling on the silk. Close examination of a young ear would show that each embryo kernel has a silk attached to it. In this cross section of an embryo ear, the silks are exaggerated in size so they can be seen more easily. When pollen is thrown off from the tassel of a corn plant, the pollen grains float through the air until some of them fall on the waving silk of the ear. Then the pollen grain sends a minute finger-like tube along the silk to the embryo kernel. When it reaches the embryo, fertilization takes place and the embryo kernel begins to form a seed. If no pollen lights on the tassel, the ear will be barren. This is a sterile ear. Using this knowledge of the means by which corn reproduces itself, the plant breeders develop parent stocks for hybrid seed by inbreeding selected varieties of open pollinated corn. In other words, corn pollinated by the uncontrolled natural process. Then they develop commercial hybrid seed by carefully controlled crossing and double crossing of the seed from the inbred parent stock. Large tracts of land are set aside for these operations. Early in the spring, test plots are carefully marked off on well-prepared ground by a tractor-mounted marker. Packets of seed some from selected open pollinated varieties, others the offspring of previously inbred stocks, are methodically distributed, so each will be planted to its assigned role. Planting crews follow the distributor and put the precious seeds into the ground with hand planters. Usually, each type of seed is spaced 12 to the row. This is a busy period. The seeds must be planted quickly Time is of the essence. Careful watch is kept on the plots. As soon as the plants come up,
cultivating crews move through the field to kill off any weeds which might intrude upon this domain of thoroughbreds. A panorama of the experimental plots contrasts the many types of corn plants, some tall, some short, all in various stages of growth and in several shades of green. An aerial view of the section emphasizes the contrast even more. Before the pollen begins to fall, and before the silks emerge, the hand-pollinating crews begin their work. It's an arduous task. One grower has made as many as 400,000 hand pollinations in a season. Tassels are covered with large paper sacks to contain the pollen as it is dropped. The ear shoot is covered with a glassine bag to prevent any stray pollen of an unknown plant from falling on it. If the silk begins to grow out before the tassel is prepared to shed pollen, it is clipped to hold it back until the pollen from the tassel is ready. When the pollen is all set to fall, the tassel bag is shaken vigorously and removed with the pollen in the bottom. Then it's inverted over the glassine covered ear chute. The glassine bag is removed and the pollen bag is given a sharp flip and securely fastened. Only those plants which can survive this ruthless inbreeding have a chance to become parent stock. It usually takes a period of five to seven years for an inbred to prove itself. All this for a single purpose, to develop a top quality hybrid seed. Once the proper inbreds have been developed and test crossings have shown that the offspring of these parent stocks will yield seeds suitable to the demands of our agriculture, the seed grower is ready to go into production. The family tree of a hybrid would look something like this. The first year, two pairs of selected inbreds are crossed. These pairs each yield a single cross hybrid, which in itself would serve as a satisfactory seed. But tests have proved that crossing these two single crosses would incorporate the best characteristics of the four inbred parents into one superior hybrid seed. So, the following year, the two single crosses are planted together and crossed, and they yield the hybrid seed, which is sold to the farmer, and assures him of a finer yield for his efforts. The cost of this seed is greater than the open pollinated variety, but the return is well worth it. Now for the actual production of hybrid seed corn, starting with the single cross of two inbreds because hand pollination would be too costly for large-scale production, Mother Nature is called upon to aid in cross-pollination. The seed grower plants his inbreds in a field which is isolated from any other corn field by at least one-eighth of a mile. Thus, the female parent ears will receive pollen only from a known source. Two rows are planted to one inbred, which is to serve as the male parent. Two rows alongside are planted to another selected inbred, which will serve as the female parent and produce the single cross hybrid seed. To make certain that the seed rows are fertilized only by pollen from the male rows, the tassels are removed from the seed rows. Accurate control is absolutely essential to the purity of cross pollination. Tassels are removed from the female rows as soon as they emerge. Throughout the pollination period, large crews are kept busy patrolling the seed rows, plucking each tassel as it begins to come out. Usually, the seed rows have to be detasseled about 20 times a season to ensure complete pollination control. An aerial view of the single cross field shows the pattern made by the alternate pairs of tasseled and detasseled rows. When threatened with insect invasion of this precious parent stock, 
Some seed growers call on airmen to spray their fields with insecticide to stop the pests before they make any inroads on this valuable crop. In the fall, as soon as the corn is mature, the seed rows are harvested by mechanical corn pickers. The pollen rows, which have produced another generation of inbred stock, are harvested separately and saved for single crossing the next year. Hauled from the field to the seed house, the ears are conveyed to bins, from which they are sent down to a line of sharp-eyed inspectors who carefully examine each ear. They remove any bad parts and in some cases reject the whole ear if it does not measure up to the sharp standards set by the seed producer. After drying, the ears go to the sheller. On the way, still another inspector checks them for top quality. In the sheller, the cobs are rejected. The seed is weighed, sacked, marked, and ready for storage. The following year, two single-crossed hybrids are crossed again to yield the commercial seed which is to be sold to the farmer. In this crossing, two rows are planted to male stock and four to female stock. In some cases, the ratio is one to six if location and climate permit. Here too, pollination control is a must. In these large fields, carriers move the workers through the rows to pluck the tassels as they emerge. This job must be accomplished quickly and thoroughly. These sharp-eyed detasselers have to be on the alert every instant so that no stray tassel escapes them as they move along. When the fields are seen from the air, the ratio and pattern of tassel rows in relation to seed rows is quite apparent. When harvest time rolls around, the seed rows are picked by mechanical corn harvesters. The male rows are self-hybrids and have no value as seed. They will be harvested at a later date for ordinary feed. The double-crossed hybrid is hauled to the seed house for careful processing similar to that given the single-crossed seed. The ears are stored in big bins for drying. Hot air from large mobile drying units is forced through the bins to bring the moisture content down to a safe level. When drying is completed, the ears are sent to the sheller. On the way, they are carefully inspected. After shelling, long conveyors carry the seed to the grater, an ingenious machine which cleans and sorts the kernels according to size. Then, the seed is sacked and labeled for shipping to the dealers who will distribute it to the farmers. The majority of them have now learned the value of planting hybrid seed. In the laboratory, samples from each batch of seed are rigorously tested for various qualities. Germination, for instance. The germination test is started by placing the trays of samples in a cold room for eight to 10 days. The temperature is kept at a constant 45 degrees. This simulates the conditions which a seed might meet in an unusually cold, wet spring. At the same time, if a seed is particularly susceptible to fungus infection, this test will show that fact, and the batch from which the sample was taken will be treated with a specified fungicide. From the cold room, the sample trays are transferred to a warm cabinet and given an opportunity to germinate. When the germination period is over, sprouted seeds are removed from the tray and the remaining kernels readily indicate the percentage of germination. With this data at hand, the seed producer can accurately predict the performance of each sack of seed sold to the grower. That briefly is how hybrid seed corn is produced under rigidly controlled conditions all the way. It's the story of men of science helping nature to surpass herself, of the magic of the plant breeders, of the success of the hunger fighters. It would be a mighty important story even if there were no sequel, but the amazing success with corn hybrids is only the beginning. It has led to research along similar lines with many other farm products. Better beef and more milk from hybrid cattle, more and better eggs from hybrid chickens, Better vegetables with hybrid tomatoes, peas, beans, onions, 
In fact, the whole garden family. Even the growing of trees promises to be better, faster, and more profitable as a result of the plant breeder's skill. Yes, the future holds great promise. The application of the science of hybridizing has proven itself in the corn fields of the nation and will prove itself many times with other crops in the years to come. <laughs>